Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Maddie Nelson and I was part of the Ocean Engineering Bathymetry sub-team. I worked with Alex LeBert, Riley Nisbet, No Pritt, Brendan Chang, Ryan Bergamini, and a couple of great TAs to complete the bathymetry aspect of our 2018 Fall X Prize competition. Um, so before I begin and before we see the videos that our team took of the work that we did this fall on bathymetry, I'd first like to give a quick introduction on what bathymetry is. So what is bathymetry? Bathymetry is the underwater equivalent to topography. It is the study of lake and ocean floors and their depths, similarly to how topography maps can be seen with each ring representing a different height Bathymetry maps are often shown using the rainbow color spectrum in addition to the rings to show the various depths of bodies of water. For example, in this image of the Southern Lake Michigan, we see that the red rainbow color near the shores is um, the shallower water and as you go deeper into the lake, you can see the color turn a darker shade of blue and you can see the rings that differentiate the different depths of the lake. So why is bathymetry important? Why are we doing this X Prize competition to map the ocean floors? Why do we need to know this information and how does it really affect us? So there are many uses of bathymetry. Bathymetry is extremely important for many reasons. The most important reason is safe travel. Bathymetry data is used in nautical charts, which help mariners travel from place to place safely and efficiently. Additionally, bathymetry data helps us better understand the different habitats within the ocean. Depth and characteristics of the ocean floor influence the organisms that live there, which can help us better understand and do research on these creatures. Additionally, having accurate bathymetry data helps us more accurately determine the changes in sea level due to climate change. If we have accurate recordings of, for example, the ocean levels one year to the next year, we can determine how the ocean is changing and how we might adapt to those changes. Additionally, bathymetry can also be used um, for fishing conditions and some maps such as this mix in a little bit of fishing condition information with the bathymetry map. The question then is how much bathymetry do we already know and why is it so important for us to find an efficient and accurate way to learn more about the ocean floors now? Um, here's a picture of Lake Superior, but something really interesting is that in 2014, we had an approximate map of 100% of the ocean floor that was mapped to a maximum resolution of around five kilometers. This resolution means that most objects or features on the map that are larger than five kilometers, we will be able to see. However, anything that is smaller than five kilometers, we wouldn't necessarily be able to see. This mapping, done by David Sandwell of Scripps Institute of Oceano Oceano Oceanography in San Diego and colleagues, used satellites, gravity, and estimations to map the seafloor. While this is a great first step towards knowing more about the ocean and its various depths, a mapping of maximum resolution of around 5 kilometers is a less detailed map than we have of Mars, the Moon, and even Venus. This gap is due in main to the fact that it is difficult to use satellites, a typical bathymetry method, because the ocean's water acts as a veil and blocks the radio waves. Thanks so much for listening a little bit more about what bathymetry is, how we are using it, why it is important, and thank you again to the help of our TAs. Uh, and now we will dive a little deeper into the different methods we used this fall to do the bathymetry aspect of this X Prize.